Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone World Championships. I'm here with Frodan, and we just saw our first player who qualified in our top eight. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said about the meaningfulness of Tice going through to the round of eight. The first is that this guy is one of the most consistent players in Hearthstone for a long time, for about a year and a half. Um, and that's something that people really say is hard to find in a card game that's as dynamic as Hearthstone because sometimes you get good hands, sometimes you get bad hands, but it's all about how well you do with the bad hands. You know, almost anyone can play a good hand. And I think the fact that he can show such good consistency throughout the entire year and through his entire career, in fact, um, will not only speak volumes about his play, but also his reputation and respect from his peers. Exactly. He is our European champion this year, but in addition to that, he's claimed how many titles this year? Uh, he's at least won two tournaments, I remember, and he's also been able to just place like in the finals of, of, of a lot. Um, and there's also something I do want to point out, that Tice, about a year and a half to two years ago, was also one of the unknown players back in the day. He was watching BlizzCon 2014, you know, the Innkeeper Invitational. Yeah. He was watching some of the series like Fight Night, and he said, I want to be a player just like them. So he started op entering every open tournament possible. And in one month, he won five weekly cups, which is actually impossible because there's only four in that month. He decided to win on both Europe and North America in the same day. So this is the kind of guy that he was, going through hundreds of comp competitors and being able to win week to week to week to week, showing his consistency. Um, he made a name for himself, and that's how he started. And I feel like a lot of people can follow that example. They don't have to just be one of these players who streams and try to get through you know, the people's vote to get in. Tice proved it through reputation, hard work, and dedication. Absolutely, and he does have the support of the people as well because what a nice guy. Yep. So we have our next match all set up. I hope you guys are ready. Don't go anywhere. Kranich versus Zoro. All right, we see the players shaking hands there. Kranich versus Zoro up in this next series. Uh, obviously, both players won their first sets, and now they're uh, both competing here. Whoever wins will or be guaranteed to join Ties in the top eight at BlizzCon. Uh, I'm joined at the desk by Savitz and Amaz, and of course, I am Robert Word in the Wing. Guys, obviously, we just witnessed Ties advance to the top eight. A very, very uh, interesting series. You know, a very, very high-level plays, and uh, I got to say, Murloc representation in that series. Not necessarily brought up a lot, but seeing the double Murloc Knight come out on turn 10 and the hero power, uh, and then just Murlocs everywhere. It was, a, it was a very entertaining series. What'd you think? Well, you don't see that often. Really really uh, impressive from Ty seeing him uh, do well. But now we have Zoro going up against Kranich, and uh, it should be an exciting one. We can see the, uh, some uh, face hunter action, the aggressive hunter, and uh, both plays with druids, both plays with hunters, but the difference is that there will be a uh, there will be a Warlock from one side and uh, and uh, Secret Spalin from the other. Mm -hmm. Right, we also see, uh, obviously, Kranich was the Asia-Pacific uh, regional champion, and uh, he's going to be representing the Asia-Pacific region here uh, versus Zoro, who obviously hails from China. So we want to know who you think is going to win. Uh, you, the hashtag APAC win or CN win to let us know who you think uh, will take this series ultimately. Amaz, what do you think of these two players? Oh, these two players played really, really well, but um, I would have to give the edge to the Secret Spalin list. Uh, it's been actually, to be honest, I looked at some stats, and Paladin is actually among the lowest win rates. Um, you know, getting stomped by classes like Priest and Shaman. Uh, maybe because a lot of people are playing Paladins and it's like played a lot. But uh, Secret Paladin is a deck that's really, really strong. They have those, you know, power cards at you know, with Mysterious Challenger, with Doctor Boom. So um, you know, if the if if his opponent doesn't have enough answers to um, you know. To, you know, answer the minions that are put on the board every single turn, then they'll just fall behind and lose the game. Yeah, you brought up an interesting point, though, that uh, Secret Paladin has been losing to Shaman and Priest, which, yeah. you know, if you'd have told me that before this tournament started that that would have been one of the major storylines is uh, Shaman and Priest, uh, even Rogue, doing really well in their respective series, would not have seen that coming. I assume uh, a surprise to you as well. Yeah, um, based on this lineup, I, I would also like give Zoro the advantage here. Not not only because of the secret spalling, but also because of that hunter. That aggressive hunter will be very good against the Zoo of Granite if those two get matched up. Right. So obviously, uh, Zoo for those if you're somehow not familiar with Zoo as oh, a yeah. deck, it's been around forever. Uh, does a very good job of trying to hold and leverage the board. At base hunter uh, has a lot of ways to just kind of ignore the board, do just a ton of damage. Explosive trap really upsets what Zoo wants to do, which is hold onto that board. So I have to agree with you. I think Zoro just pure Purely based on the lineups here, might have a slight edge. But Kranich, obviously an extremely skilled player, made to BlizzCon last year, uh, had a couple of very flashy plays using 
pre-patron one turn kill warrior with kind of the raging worgen uh, charge mechanic so very clever player that's that's something i think that maybe if you don't watch a lot of uh, asia pacific hearthstone you don't know about him is he's a very very clever player yeah very um, creative as well right uh, yep. you don't see the charging raging worgen um in in tournaments ever and to mention that he actually brought it to blizzcon was actually quite insane so i i, I can imagine some crazy stuff happening with his uh, warlock yeah, yeah really cool stuff uh the aggressive warlock has been uh has not been uh, very popular lately, but it's definitely a viable deck. It's a strong deck. Personally, I used it to reach legend this season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fun deck to play as well. Right, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting to look at you know what these players brought as far as their compositions because in times prior to the Warsong Commander change, uh, you know there was kind of an established meta as what the expectation was that players would bring, and then a couple of players would surprise us with different decks. But this whole tournament, there's just been so much variation as far as what we've seen, and you know Kranich, like all other players uh, at this point, had to kind of look at the the situation and decide, all right, what is going to give me the highest chance to win? What do I feel most comfortable playing? And obviously bringing that Zoo Demon Lock uh, deck is something he feels can perform very strongly. And it kind of makes you wonder what he ex was expecting to run into here and if that's kind of lined up. Obviously he won his first series, so he's doing pretty well, but uh, what kind of decks would you bring Zoo Demon Lock to, to fight against? Yeah, I mean, obviously he does not expect, uh, I don't know what he expects, but he does not expect the Warsong Commander and Patron to right. clear off the whole Zoo board, right? <laughs> so ever since that uh, change was made to Warsong Commander, it actually made Zoo a little bit more powerful um, as a result. Right, yeah, we're actually going to open up uh, game one here with a Hunter Mirror. Yep, we see uh, Zoro's running that faster Hunter version, and Kranich is running a little bit of a slower version. So it's, uh, we talked about this matchup yesterday. Yeah, well, there's some different opinions about uh, who's favored and, and what, but uh, personally, I, I uh, tend to favor the faster Hunter in this case. It's, it's always going to be a race, and uh, the defensive tools are not quite there for the slower, slower Hunter, so... Mm -hmm. You can't really stop the damage coming in from the from the fast one. Well, a good thing about uh, Kranich's hand is that he did start with a web spinner, and he does have a natural curve uh, with a two drop of the bear trap. So, yeah. um, if Zoro goes a little bit, um, you know, uh, YOLO, he's just gonna activate the bear trap, and Kranich is gonna have a two mana three three, which is above the curve. Yeah, I've never seen bear trap be that effective. <laughs> it's going to be quite amazing here. Well, if Zoro has been keeping up with the matches, which I, I expect he would have at this point, he would realize that Kranich has already showed off this bear trap, but again, the face oh. hunter agenda is as such to where you have to push the damage and you can't really play around it, so the eagle horn bow with the coin going to allow him to deal with the taunt. Uh, yep. There are many in the community who believe that taunt is in fact cheating. <laughs> so, so bow's going to handle it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a very clean answer. And now Kranich does not really have a good turn three response to yeah. the current situation. He Usually might, you want to establish more stuff like uh, Animal Companion, perhaps. He might or even draw mass scientists. He might find a turn three. Oh, oh, oh wow. that's not a turn three play, but that <laughs> might be very, very strong later on. I was going to say, uh, it's, it's not playable now, but that might prove to be extremely relevant because when the slower hunter tends to lose this matchup, it's not by a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's usually the, the face hunter just kind of edges them out. Uh, oh. Leoc. Always Leoc. Not, <laughs> never, never lucky. Uh, yeah. Leoc, obviously not what you want to see here, especially with that Shredder coming down. Because yeah. that Shredder is going to trade so advantageously into Leoc. Yeah. That's right. Zoro is obviously going to perhaps use the bow to clear off the Shredder, but having the Leoc off the Animal Companion gives so much time for Kranich to hopefully go into King Crush and crush Zoro out of the game. I yeah. like it. King Crush Zoro out of the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, Zoro here is presented with a couple of options. As you said, Iron Beak, the Shredder potentially just use the bow to just cleanly remove it. Right. And then he still has two mana to work with, which I would assume would probably be put into the hero power as opposed to quick shot. Although, oh, uh, I kind of like uh, the quick shot actually, because the, the rest of his hand is so expensive. Uh, the quick shot won't be drawing a card anytime soon. He also protects his HP with this uh, move as opposed to actually putting the, the bow into the four damage Shredder. So, that is I, true. I like that as well. Uh, when you're, because this matchup is such a back and forth, and as I just mentioned, the smallest amount of HP can make all the difference. So. Yeah, usually in a lot of matchups, health doesn't really matter, right? It's about the reach that you're going to get in the late game. But with Hunter, the hero power is always there, so you can always just kill your opponent with the um, consistent two damage to the face. Kranich with another taunt. Uh, Zoro, <laughs> how do you want to see? And Zoro did just use the Owl yeah. to move the Shredder, which at the time made a ton of sense, but now. You know, unfortunately, he has to use a kill command, which is a very precious resource. That is five damage in a lot of cases yep. yes. that uh, Zoro will no longer be able to use on Kranich's face. Well, it does deal with the taunt for now. Not a big deal. He still like, gets to deal some extra damage with the light on big owl and yeah. the hero power. He also drew a clockwork gnome here, but doesn't want to play it just yet because of the potential of Unleash the Hounds. And Kranich does have it. 
So Zoro is technically winning the race right now. Uh, right. Obviously, 24 is a higher number than 18, so That's he is true. winning. Yep. Uh, but at the same time, Kranich uh, he has unleashed the Hounds, which is a tool that doesn't do a whole lot in this uh, context. See? Oh, always Leoc. Wow. Always it is, in Leoc. fact, always Leoc. All right. Uh, obviously, we've been making predictions up to this point. That <laughs> second animal companion in Zoro's hand, I'm saying it's Uffer. No, no, it's Leoc. You sure we're going to get always three of a kind? Leoc. We're going to get three Leocs? Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Amaz, what do you think? What's in that animal uh, companion? I, I think it's going to be Huffer, man. You got to kill your opponent before they Dr. Broom you. Because huh. Dr. Broom does more damage than Huffer. <laughs> By a slim margin. But just a little bit, like yeah. 8 damage versus 9 damage, since Huffer does charge the you know, turn you play in. Right. That's right. So, you know. Yeah, I, I want to point out real quick before we get too far away from the that moment that Kranich running that Sludge Belcher is, uh, is a little bit uncommon these days in mid-range Hunter. Yeah, but it does make a lot of sense when you play Snake Trap, right? Uh, yeah. Snake Trap with taunts are really, really powerful. Absolutely, because if there is no silence, for the for the taunt, it obviously forces the opponent to attack into it and uh, therefore trigger the snake trap. That uh, that also <laughs> kill commands being used in ways that the hunter would rather not use them. Yeah, it looks like he's going for the Leok here. Looks like he's going for the Huffer here. Yeah. Oh, wow, we're all wrong. He gets the mission. <laughs> <laughs> I all guess right. that's fair, right? Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred to be right, but you know, at least the East wasn't all, wasn't right. That's oh, oh. the that's the trade. All right. All right. Just gonna equip the Evil Horn Bowl here and attack. It's pretty much a three mana fireball in this case. You just want to hit your opponent in the face. And honestly, Misha's not a bad roll. I mean, it's, it's it's fun to joke around about how it should always be Huffer. Oh, it's actually pretty bad here because the Hounds each have two damage on them because of the Leoc. So Leoc actually doing a lot of work here. Uh, really I was not finished, but oh. yeah, no, no, I completely. Oh, yeah. 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 really wanted to hit one knife on that Iron Big Owl, but doesn't land it. Oh, at least he has the Leoc to clean it up. He does. Yeah. Would have preferred to go face with that. And now the Leoc is also reduced down to 2 HP. So if there was an explosive trap coming out from Zoro, the Leoc would be in danger. So in a lot of situations, even as a face hunter player, you want to clear the knife juggler because it's such a problem. Yeah, but you don't but want to clear the knife juggler because there's a snake trap. Right, but and especially when Kranich is at 13 health and you All look right. at your hand, you're kind of thinking, eh, it's probably just time to kill him. Okay, yeah, that, that was also a thing. So curious to see what he does here if he thinks the knife juggler is an issue. Nope. Nope. He will not be deceived, and now he absolutely knows it's Snake Trap, so yep. there is no chance that he is going anywhere but the face. Yeah, and yeah. you probably want a Hero Power instead here, uh, instead of Wolf Riders, because you can Wolf Rider and Hero Power next turn. Yeah, I agree. He wants to wants to be able to to have as good a chance to, to end the game next turn as possible, and with the Wolf Rider in his hand, uh, Clive Zuka would, uh, would also do it. Oh, Dr. Boom, that's yeah. three juggles. Clive Zuka. All three, all three juggles hit these uh, minions. He might, Kranich might actually set up lethal for the next turn with the King Crush. Oh, wow. That would, uh, that would be quite the comeback. But yeah, I mean, as you brought up, speeds up. Glaive Zuka would win him the game. Second kill command, a quick shot, yep. a stiff breeze. Or the spare part, <laughs> perhaps. Oh, Ooh. wow. All right. That's a no, that's the wrong one. Yeah. No, oh, but it's a, oh, I mean, it. as a face hunter, like 95% of your deck is devoted to doing damage. So it's true. Can you really call it a top deck? That's it's gonna say. so many. So, it's the deck strategy. There's, there's really, I mean, <sighs> with Haunted Creeper removed from face hunter list too, because uh -huh. it doesn't do immediate damage. That was like one of the only cards that didn't do immediate damage. So, uh, the world where he couldn't find one damage as a face hunter wasn't a terribly probable world. But uh, yeah. Zora's gonna take game one, obviously, and yeah, off the off the back of playing really well. Obviously, understood his outs as face hunter. I wanted Zoro not to draw the damage because I just want to see King Crush in action, man. Hey, oh, yeah. that's yeah, totally that's fair. Weird. That's totally fair. <laughs> From a viewership experience, King Crush is a ton of fun to watch uh, yeah. on the board. So, uh, Zoro finishes now that first game. Yep, his hunter deck is officially out of the running, and the next two decks he's going to have to use uh, Druid and Paladin. Yeah, their hunt, their face hunter was very strong against Kranich's lineup anyway, so that win is, uh, even though it's a nice 1-0 for Zoro, it was not the most meaningful one, I would say, because that deck was expected to win anyway. Right. Yep. But, and good thing for Kranich, he still has his mid-range hunter against, you know, stuff like uh, Druid, which is a very good matchup. So I wouldn't say that Zoro is in a huge advantage. I, think, yep. I still think Kranich can still get it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually had a chance to talk to Zora a little bit about the background on his gamer tag, so we'll go ahead and share that with you guys. Zoro, this is a Japanese character. He has a very strong spirit of persistence and unwavering resolve, so I really like this character. If I win the Jianlian Hwa's Grand Jun, I will buy the Zhou Lou, the character of the Zhou Lou, buy his clothes and clothes, to make it easier for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is uh, 
Uh, so obviously, uh, a lot of people come to the Hearthstone World Championship with different goals. Uh, obviously, winning is the ultimate goal, but winning kind of enables other things. Uh, I like his goal. Yeah, like one hundred thousand dollars Zoro costume. Uh, it will be without a doubt the best Zoro costume in the world, rated number one by Gosu Gamers and all their rankings. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely going to be the best costume, and I think it's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people when they are asked, you know, well, oh, what what are you going to do with that money? Like, what are you going to do if you win? And it's like. Oh, you know, I'll like buy a house or I'll invest the money in like hedge funds or something. But he's like, no, I'll build a really cool costume. No, a lot of uh, players uh, today were, you know, when, when they were saying that if they win the prize money, they're just going to buy something for their mother, which is uh, really sweet. I mean, so, I'm sure uh, even after buying a really nice Zoro costume, you can still buy something for your mom. <laughs> There's going to be yeah. some leftover money. All right. At least a box <laughs> a little of bit. chocolate. I was going to say, at least take her to <laughs> dinner or something. <laughs> but uh, we are going to hop over here into game two. And this is a. Uh, this is going to be, I believe, yeah, Secret Paladin versus the the Zulok. Right. Yeah. Which, I actually, so back in the day, back in the day, Paladin was hugely unfavored against Zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoo just ramped up way too quickly. Paladin has the big board clear, but it costs a lot of mana. It usually leaves them with a very weak board as well because of equality. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not actually super sure, personally, how Secret Paladin does into Zoo. Do you guys have any kind of insight into this matchup? I think uh, Secret yeah. Paladin against Zoo is such a big favorite for the uh, Secret Paladin because you have minions like Shield and Minibot, which trades two for one. Oh, you also, like yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you also have must over battle. And we do know that Zoo have a very hard time dealing with a lot of small creatures. They don't have uh, area effect. They do not play Hellfire or Shadow Flame or anything like that. Uh, the only thing they play is Knife Juggler uh, Implosion. And that is a turn six play, whereas must over battle comes out at uh, turn three. Yeah, the Shield and Minibot was already looking so amazing at blocking the Knife Juggler, but Granny does draw the Void Walker from the top of his deck. That, that is going to help deal with the Divine Shield. Yeah, but at the same time, is that really that good? A must no. over battle is going to come out next turn. It's not that amazing, yeah. but it does help. It helps a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it will protect that 3-2, which... I mean, that's kind of the worst case scenario as the zoo player is that 3 2 comes down, you deal three three damage to yourself, and then it just dies. And it doesn't even trade out, it just yeah. it pops just the Divine yeah, Shield. Trades, <laughs> trades with the Divine mm. Shield. All right. yeah, doesn't so, feel good. And when we look at Kranich's hand right now, Void Terror is, is not Revolution super relevant to anything he has currently. Implosion could be big uh, on turn four, but unless he draws something better, we might just see that Knife Juggler come down. And he's not going to feel good about just playing the Knife Juggler down onto the board. Mm -hmm. But you, I feel like in this matchup, you can't really just let yourself get behind on board. Because Paladin is so good at generating board presence with cards like Muster for Battle. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of like piloted Shredders. Uh, so you probably, I don't know, what do you guys think? Knife Juggler on the next turn here? I think you go all in with the Void Terror. He, he knows that there's no other Peacekeepers in Zoro's deck. It's, it is the Secrets Paladin. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, looking at this hand, we don't see any Secrets. But I believe he had some uh, in his starting hand. Yeah, going with the Void Terror would be a very good play. Uh, given that we know all the information here, Zoro does That's not true. have a Zoro doesn't answer have to deal with that. So. But is there any card that Zoro could even have to deal with that efficiently? Maybe maybe a uh, Noble Sacrifice would kind of slow it down. That's true. So I think also you have to take into consideration what your turn four is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So you have that Defender of Argus at the moment. You have the Implosion. <laughs> right? I mean... Your turn four is not very solid based on what you see on the board right now. Another problem with Void Terror is very hard to play the actual card. Sometimes you just don't want to yes. kill your own minions. And he's oh, doing it. Oh, he's going for I it. I love it. This is this is good. This is a very, I don't want to say ambitious. It's an aggressive. Play. It's a heads up play. It's understanding that the rest of your options are not good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this uh, this does present a, a big body on the board that if it isn't dealt with, uh, could absolutely just do so much damage to Zoro over a couple of turns. Yeah, Zoro can't really do anything about it for now. Most of a battle, always good, and he's still at 26 HP, so taking 7 from that next turn is not a huge deal. This is one of those cool moments for Kranich, like when you're when you're playing a match and you and you make what you feel is a really heads-up play, and it isn't punished and you're, you're just rewarded for it, you're like, yeah, yeah I was really clever <laughs> there, I'm glad I did that. And now we see Imp Gang Boss, which, not on curve, but still a very powerful minion, especially yeah. with all those 1-1s one and the 2-2 two -two on the board, but Implosion also very solid when you roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kranich has not been studying up on his demonology. Oh, oh wow. wow, that equality was really good because the implosion yeah. actually removed the possibility of Void Terror dying from the board, but not from the hand. Equality is going to kill off the Void Terror really, yeah. really well. That is absolutely not something Kranich wants to see. Uh, that said, he's not in an awful position here. He'll be on turn five. Reporting he could play down the you. Knife Juggler and the Imp Gang boss and try to snipe one of the... Uh, one one silver hand covenant recruits. But his time is actually running out. Zoro has no step next turn. Uh, and Dr. Broom and Tyrion are going to follow it up. So 
Yeah, so I really needs to find a uh, six drop, and that's like. Oh! <laughs> what did you say, Yamal? Yeah, well, th there, there it is. That's what you want to see, right? Oh, that's I amazing. Mean, I see four straight legendaries you play: five, six, seven, and no, eight. No, Mysterious Chandra is not a legendary, even though. I mean, you say that, but it feels like a legendary to me. It does a oh, lot when okay. it comes down. Okay, so we know that Zoro, if this Ooh. game goes to the late game, Zoro is in a commanding position. But Zoro is down to 15 HP, My so maybe there is still a chance that if Granich takes very aggressive approach to this, that he can end the game uh, right. before anything too bad happens. <laughs> yeah. Zoro drawing the secret was a little bit unfortunate, but well, running two Still copies of each. I was gonna say, we saw the two in the opening hand, so... Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is just brutal. And unfortunately, I think if Kranich can't, I guess, close this out before turn eight, and that Tyrion Forgering's on board, mm. things just get so much more impossible. Exactly. Uh, this is definitely a bad spot for Kranich to be in. As some a, Doom Guards, yeah. some powerful Wolfings will do the trick. I think Kranich really needs a four here, because with all those one ones, uh, Zoro, Zoro doesn't have the the consecration right now, right. and the one ones are going to be annoying to deal with. You could be a bit greedy too, right? Attack of the Argus first, and then uh, the Avenge goes on the Lothab, and then you roll a four. Oh. This is a, this is an interesting point because uh, when it comes to Secret Paladin, there's this idea among some of the top level players I've spoken to that you just have to understand how to like basically disarm the traps. And if you do it correctly, and you have a plan, and you understand what's going to happen, mm -hmm. then it's usually not that bad, and you feel like you can beat Secret Paladin. Right. But at this point, where Kranich is so far behind, there isn't really a scenario where you, you disarm it to be in a better space. Yeah. You just kind of have to deal with it, because you need to push the damage before things get too out of hand. When you only have one minion, it's really hard to not disarm the trap, right? Your choice is where to attack or not. And uh, Kranich is going to choose not to attack, because it'll give Zora a bigger board. Yeah, yeah Zoro would have gotten an extra 3-2 from the Noble Sacrifice. The Noble Sacrifice would have come out, uh, get, re get that uh, redemption, and not only that, the Avenge would have also went off, and either a Mysterious Challenger or the Lord would have been buffed. So a smart decision from Kranich not to attack that gun. Speaking of a bigger board, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Dr. Boom. Yeah. Kranich probably realizes that this is not his game to win on the board. He just needs to rush his opponent down. So he's getting Life Tap here, try and find some uh, damage, but... Voidterra's not quite it. Voidterra looks so happy too. He's like, hey, I can help. It's like, no. Nah. Could you be a Doom Guard instead? Could you go 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 back and get Doom Guard? Exactly. Oh. This is so brutal. Yeah, this is uh Wow. That Boombot eats his Wheaties. Very strong Boombot. Kranich needs Twisting Nether and two extra mana right now. <laughs> Deathwing would help. Deathwing would help, and then maybe you know a and, couple and extra and mana. A couple of extra mana. Yeah. So, it's important to roll for here. Oh. Nope. So. This is. Yeah. Kranich <laughs> 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 goes ahead and concede that. Zora's gonna go up 2 0. It's so crazy to me how, how far this matchup has come since the, just the early days of Hearthstone, where Paladin just got out, out muscled on the board so easily right. by the Zulok. And now Zulok's in the position where it's like, ah, shielded Minibod, muster for battle. This is all going terribly. I don't want this in my life. And then yeah. he just curves out into Lotha, Mysterious Challenger, Dr. Boom, and ah, yeah. uh, dark times for the Zulok. Yeah. yeah, all the tools are there for the Paladin to to um, to combat the Zulok very efficiently. And uh, in this case, Zoro drew into them as well. Mm -hmm. GVG really helped the Paladin with Muster and uh, Shoot a Minibug. Right. So that's why we see, saw a decline of Zoo. Perhaps the uh, Warsong Commander wasn't enough to bring the Zoo back. Well, it's one of those reads, again, where it depends on what you expect to see. And uh, as I mentioned a couple times over the course of this tournament, we didn't really see any of the Secret Paladin in the European uh, championship. True. We didn't see it in the North American championship. Players were still not sold that it was consistent enough to bring. So maybe Kranich is figuring, well, I don't expect to run into you know, Secret Paladin. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so now we're in a place that feels very familiar over the course of this tournament. Uh, Zora just has to win one game, three chances with Druid. All right. So... Generally speaking, Druid very capable of winning one game. Yeah, it's looking quite good. Even if all things, all other things go wrong, he, there's always the mirror. So at worst, it's, there's at least one 50-50 matchup, even if he's not favored in the other two. Okay. Right. So two free chances to perhaps win the Hunter or you know, the Warlock matchup, the Zoo, which yeah. is both pretty hard matches, but you stay at the 50-50. So yeah, yeah Zoro's definitely a big favorite here. The Hunter and the Warlock, I would say, are, are not favorable for the Druid, but mm -hmm. there's still a, a decent chance. If you get the right draws, you yeah. get the... 
the mana cards early and you get the innervate wild growth, you're not aspirant and then curve out nicely with your Druid of the Claw and so on. <laughs> I heard turn two absolutely anything. Yeah, I heard turn two Doctor Broom is pretty good against those castles. Yeah, that's that, it's it's decent. <laughs> <laughs> Zoro, oh god, feels like whenever you're the hunter, you just automatically give Druid innervate and keeper the grove with the opening hand. Yeah, there you go. It's, this is one of those things that like pains me personally to see. It happens the every single game. Innervate. Yeah, it's like the, um, oh, you're facing against Hanzo. Here, let me help you out. Oh, yeah, you're definitely going to want to go with this. <laughs> so you're gonna, this is going to help you a lot against that knife juggler. The Kranich will certainly draw by turn two. Uh, there you go. Ah, just, <laughs> I'm just, I need a moment, guys. This is okay. really this is really painful for me to is watch. Is it hard coded in the Hearthstone software? <laughs> no, I'm actually just a wizard. Uh, oh. And I'm really good at predicting these things. Savish okay, okay. and I were doing it actually backstage during the last series. Like we were just predicting things like, oh, cut purse, what if he had Dr. Boom? And then he oh, drove yeah. Dr. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, for Kranich, the name of the game here is try to get board pressure. Uh, for Zoro, it's survive until he has minions on board, mm -hmm. using like Savage Roar to go ahead and finish off the hunter. And uh, once again, Keeper of the Grove is probably going to trade three for one, right? You play it down, kill something immediately, and then Keeper of the Grove kills a web spinner, and then dies to Eagle Horn Bow. That's three cards to kill one card. Such an incredibly strong turn, innovating out at Keeper of the Grove. Farewell, Knife Juggler. If we hardly knew ye. Uh, if Kranich had a, an Eagle Horn Bow, he could use the, the bow and the web spinner to take the Keeper out, but there's no bow in sight. We'll see if he gets any. Well, so, okay, you have the Snake Trap or you have the Haunted Creeper here. Uh, you would expect that he's going to clear the Hunter Creeper, so maybe the Snake Trap feels better. Uh, we do see, obviously, Zora has two swipes in hand. Yeah, so. that's true. Swipe is one of those cards that punish a lot of 1-1s. One yeah, Amos, which one would you lean towards here? Oh, I would um, actually lean towards Snake Trap, so that um, you know, it establishes three 1-1s. One -ones. Three 1-1s one -ones combined together is a 3-3, three -three, whereas you know, Hunter Creeper might not be as powerful. And of course, if you have three 1-1s, one -ones, it makes it that much harder for them to clear, and if you top it something like the Hellmaster, it can be very effective. I like the fact that he, he went with the Hunter Creeper ultimately, because it's, it's hard to remove. Mm -hmm. I think you want to just try to stick on the board. I think the Snake Trap is totally valid for the reason you brought up, and moreover, it's three 1-1 one -one beasts. Once the Haunted Creeper is procced, you know, obviously your beasts are off the board. Mm -hmm. You just have the Spectral Spiders. You're gonna see, ah, actually the swipe come wow. out, so. All right. Maybe if you're Kranich then, you feel like the Snake Trap. Obviously, you don't want your turn four to be Snake Trap Hero Power, but you feel a little bit better about the odds of your snakes doing something impactful. Oh, again! <laughs> uh, Kranich Whoa. may be, all right, I got something for this, all right. Kranich may be down 0-2, but he's crushing it this series. Huh? Wow. Uh, yeah, it, 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 perhaps like the wrong direction. You yeah, know? He, sure. hasn't, he hasn't been crushing. <laughs> he's down 0-2. But right he's drawn now. crushed twice. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if he can, he can, he can crush this game. But it's going to take a while to get there. Yeah. Only Once again, right? right now. But yeah. I mean, this this time he's uh, you know a little bit better positioned. He has a low threat. He's a Doctor Broom, so he has a lot of threats leading up to the King Crush. Zoro also has to kind of figure out what he wants to do with this turn. He could go ahead and just innervate out an Azure Drake. You float a mana, which you know never feels particularly great. Do you float, uh, float more than one mana if you don't do it? I feel like. Right. So it's kind of it's kind of which is the most efficient play of not super efficient what plays. I say so still in a great spot. Having that second swipe feels really great for the Druid player. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's kind of a, a limit on how th bad things can get in your life playing against a hunter when you have the second swipe. Yep. Oh, and we'll see that he is actually going to just kill off the mad scientist. He does know his uh, snake trap after the attack of the keeper, but now there's the second trap, so he has to be a li little bit more careful with his uh, attacks. Yep. I'm pretty sure he he knows, he knows. his bear he knows. trap. Yeah. He's seen Kranich play the deck earlier. There's so yeah. much on the line, but yeah, he for sure has been following Kranich. Uh, early, early game. So if it is a bear trap, attacking the face is also bad, and attacking minion yeah. is also bad. So he would actually be better off holding off. He can't attack right now. But the right. second swipe is going to be incredibly good against the snake trap. Yeah, uh, second swipe, uh, especially with the Azure Drake spell power, could do a lot of damage here. Yeah. Uh, but Kranich last turn does get the five five down, mm -hmm. and it blocks. It, obviously, the Azure Drake was probably going to be the play anyway. But at the same time, getting a big body on the board is good. Ooh. Oh, and the, the Eagle Horn Bow, oh. great pickup. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. He would have preferred something like High Man, but uh, that Eagle Horn Bow, it's quite sweet. He has a good turn 7 coming up, and being able to play something on top of that juggler this turn is very important. 
Well, yeah, the Eagle Horn Bow is effectively an Assassin's Blade, right? It's a 3-4. Oh, four. yeah, he has two traps up. He has up. two traps up, yeah. so it's really, really powerful for the mana cost. For sure. Now, for Zoro, he could actually do something interesting, I guess. He could uh, hero power down the Knife Juggler, take a little bit of damage, and then swipe the yeah. Snake Trap that comes uh, up afterwards. But then the problem is that you're giving the extra charge for Kranich to work with. Yep. So he's going to actually swipe this instead, Put establish the shade. shade, and, you know, kind of freeze his... Uh, Opponent's weapon. So it's a huge draw for Zoro right there, getting the big game hunter. He doesn't know it yet how important it is, but <laughs> he's about to find out. And there's the yeah. Doctor Boom, and uh, Zoro with the perfect answer. Curious to see if the Shade survives the Boom Bots. This is uh, this is actually a really good way to get rid of the Shade. Okay, but we're not attacking the Boom Bots, right? Because the Snake Trap is. At some point, Still those up. Boom Bots will explode. Okay. And the Shade uh, may get caught in the crossfire. That's true. Uh, boom Bots love killing BGHs. That's right. And, and those Boom Bots might also take out the Shade. This is such a weird turn. Even though he has the big game hunter, what? he can't really play anything else with it. Because he only has those expensive Druid of the Claws and the Ancient of Lore. So, uh,. What do you even do? You can big game hunt that. Then, then what? Hero <laughs> power, yeah, hero pass, power. and yeah, hope that the shade survives the boom. But can't attack the face because of bear trap, and can't clear minions because snake trap. We might see a crush come out this game. Uh, that is the only big game in hunter. In oh, did, did he play double big game hunter? Somebody was playing. Somebody double was playing big game double. It might have been Zoro, but uh, at least worth, he doesn't have it yet. I think it's worth pointing out that big game hunter coming down. Now you've seen it. You have king crush in hand. Yeah. I mean. That's just something to consider. Wow. That's true. All right, let's see what the boom bots do. All right, oh. here we go. Oh, only one. Oh. Uh, boom bot, boom bot defective. Up. Not working. <laughs> return to, return to factory. So next turn, uh, Kranich has one card in hand currently. Uh, costs nine mana. Kranich will have nine mana. I wonder what he's gonna play. <laughs> I don't know, it's tough call. I mean, you can hero power pass. Uh, you know, maybe <laughs> or you can draw the top card of your deck. I was going to say, you could draw that. maybe... I mean, if Savannah Hyman comes out, maybe... maybe play yeah. Savannah Hyman or draw the power. actual King Crush you included in your deck. Right. Hey, you, you know, you joke, but I remember Jab was running that list for a while. Oh. It had uh, the King Crush, and I was playing it on ladders. Okay. Very satisfying to play King Crush. Mm. King Crush does a lot of face damage. Very good. <laughs> All right. Oh, this oh, oh, he can do, he can do it. Yes. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, you know, bomb Perfect the shade cut. one more time. All right. Bomb the shade. Oh. No. Oh. Here we go. Oh. King Crush. Zora. Oh. 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 Wow. And of course, King Crush only knows face. And yes. this is what's so good is the Crane still has both traps. Up. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's still got bear trap. He's still got snake yeah. trap. So Zoro not only has an 8-8 dinosaur to contest, but he has to deal with two traps. Yeah. Force of Nature is usually a very powerful um, trap disabler because you know it just it gets rid of a freezing trap. You still have to treat, but um, that's not going to really work out too well here. <laughs> no. Now, wait a minute. Now, so he has Savage Roar. Right. There's a combo. Yeah. Shakes yeah. don't prevent that. The taunt. The bear, the bear does prevent one yeah. attack from that. And um, yeah, this is just can barely survive. What an awkward situation for the <laughs> druid to be in. I, I saw what you did there. Barely. Barely. No, oh, I, you know, I actually didn't see it, but now that I see it, I'm glad you pointed it out. Uh, thank you for oh. bringing your pun game I, to the desk. Uh, I feel like you should have used the shade on the tree tree. Well, I mean, now it's gonna die. So a small misplay, but I think the game is already over. Uh, look, he's targeting the dinosaur. Oh. Yeah. Dinosaur is the problem. Yeah, Terminate the dinosaur. Dies. The shade died for no reason, but the game is pretty much over, so not a big deal. Um, I don't know. If you okay, if play, you around play down two one. Druid of the Claws <laughs> next turn, maybe you get an Ancient of Lore, maybe you start healing up. Wow, double Hunter Smart. I know, and that's a, that's a very dead draw, obviously, right here. Yeah, but yeah okay. It's, yeah. yeah, we're down to one. Even if Zoro draws the heal, it's still not that great. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yep. Uh, Kranich is going to be able to stay alive in the series. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, even if he loses the series, he's not out of the running. His road to BlizzCon continues. Yeah. He has another chance to uh, advance out of the group stages. This is the so. positive day where nobody gets eliminated. What a great day. Yeah. Nobody goes home today. Yeah. <laughs> Crypt like the uh, last day a bit more, where people get eliminated. I don't like that. That's so I sad. He likes to see people get crushed. Cr but we do too, ah! I mean. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Anyway. Uh, Kranich in the series now. It's 2-1. Yep. Kranich finally gets that win on his Hunter deck. I feel like Kranich's Hunter deck all throughout this uh, tournament for him has been, uh, I don't want to say his poorest deck, but it's its had the least consistent results. Right. I feel like Hunter ever, really since uh, the America's Regional, has been kind of all over the place as far as how it performs. 
Uh, obviously, some players have struggled with getting that win, but he does have that win now, and he has his uh, Demon Zulok and his Druid deck left to win with. So we may end up seeing, uh, Smeeds, as you called, that uh, the famous Druid Mirror. Oh, yeah. it's um, There's a lot of strategies in it as well. Quite often you see the players just play on Curve. If they have a Shredder and 4 mana, they play that, then play a 5, drop on 5. But there's, there's a lot of strategies in it still. Like, what do you innervate out? And what, what do you keep in your starting hand? And I think the, one of the main um, deciding factors of good Druid Mirror is to when you reveal your shade. Uh, that's actually oh, yeah. a very important, uh, you know, strategy that you need to know. Keeper of the Grove kills it. If it's a four health, it can be traded down. Five right. five is usually the, you know, uh, perfect moment to reveal it. But sometimes, you know, it's different. You want to save it for Savage Roar, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, we actually had a chance to talk to Granich, who, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is his second trip back to BlizzCon, about what it means to him to come back to BlizzCon. So I'm the only, only player who made BlizzCon two years in a row. That's because I'm a really good player. I know that there are 15 BlizzCon noobs this year, and they will be really nervous against me. I feel really confident about that. I actually didn't think anyone could have more confidence than the European Whoa. players, but Kranich really calling them out. He's calling them 15, 15 BlizzCon, BlizzCon noobs. noobs. Uh, and obviously, we saw Jab you know, in there. Uh, <laughs> just looking around. Jab in there, looking around. Obviously, obviously disagrees. <laughs> uh, but I like I like Kranich's swagger. You know, he, a lot of these players come to this, they're nervous. It's kind of their, their first really big tournament, their first chance to kind of prove what they can do on the big stage. And Kranich, no nerves. He's been here. He's a veteran. Uh, obviously, his cardigan game last year was one of the most impressive things about BlizzCon. So I, I like it. Kranich has a lot of style. Yeah. I mean, it's better to be confident than uh, be like, ah, I'm not very good, I, I, I'm i just going to lose. So. But he needs to back up that all that uh, trash talk and uh, <laughs> not get crushed by Zoro here. He still has a chance. He's going to play Zoo Warlock now against Zoro's Druid. Looking at a Knife Juggler, not bad, but he needs something more to go with it. Maybe another two drops since he has the coin. Well, I mean, if Kranish keeps the Knife Juggler, we know what's going to happen to Zoro's Mulligan, right? Oh, right. Keeper, of the keeper. Girl. that's true. Did he get rid of it? Yeah, yeah. he got rid of it. I mean, yeah. yeah, you get Nightmares. You he don't knows. want to keep I mean, that. unfortunately, the Knife Juggler is just a liability at this point. Yeah, for you give your opponent an Innervate. I don't want to play that card ever. This is, okay, this is wow. a great situation for Kranich. <laughs> it's looking Go amazing for Kranich yeah. right now. Time to put down some demons. Zoro really needs to join to a Wild Crow for the next turn. Or an Innervate. Yeah, his, uh, oh, wow, wow, that's... Okay, so very, good very solid uh, opening for Kranich. And, you know, when you play the Druid, obviously uh, accelerating your mana is, is the core part of your plan. And Ouch. there's no mana acceleration here, so Zora's going to have to play this one fair. He's just going to have to yeah. play based on his actual mana. And like uh, previously, when he plays against a Zoo Warlock, you just want to play the BGH as a 4 2, right? But now there's Malganis, people are playing. Uh, Dr. Broom as well, so you can't really play that as a free drop. Yeah, it's, it's, he might have to, but it's not something that he would like to do. And uh, missing a turn to play here, really bad for Zoro. He wanted one of the mana cards or a Brat. Doesn't get any of that. And uh, Kranich has a lot of options. A wealth of options, in fact. Yeah, he, he can sit here, he can play down the Knife Juggler, which would of course summon an Innervate and a Keeper <laughs> of the Grove. <laughs> not this game. <laughs> right, uh, into Zoro's hand, or he could just play down the Egg, uh, coin out the Imp Gang Boss. All these are actually just reasonably strong options. What do you guys like in here? I do like the uh, Nerubian Egg quite a bit because you do have the Abusive Sergeant to proc it uh, anytime you want. And coining the Imp Gang Boss while it's okay, you don't really have good trades, you can't really spawn Imps right now, and uh, you also spend the coin, which might be useful later on. I like the Juggler, that puts on the maximum pressure because uh, that deals a lot of damage. But I wouldn't have blamed him for uh, any other play. Maybe life that would have been quite bad, but other than that, uh, everything seems somewhat fine. Yeah, we see uh, Zoro actually does get that Darnassus Aspirin, and it's not even a bad draw right now. Uh, it would put him on five mana next turn if it survives. Have to imagine <laughs> Yo, it's uh, not the living. chances of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But right, I was going to point out too, if, if Kranich played down the egg, even with the Abusive Sergeant, he couldn't have taken out Darnassus Aspirin. Oh, yeah, we, we could, because the Void Walker can uh, Oh, yeah, with, I'm off. just saying, like, with the single trade, yes, you yeah, could have exactly. put the Void Walker yeah, into it. But, um, so this might have worked out a little bit better. Yeah, Kranich has the option to coin out the Implosion here with with the Knife Juggler, which is always great, but maybe he would be a little bit uh, weak to a uh, potential swipe in that case. That's one of the things when you play against Druid. 
Uh, you basically have a checklist by your side of what am I currently weak to that the druid can do. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's very excited to. Uh oh. That's fine. It's yeah. just one damage. Yeah. Oh, just okay. one damage. <laughs> That's a, I, I mean, oh, I live in a world where just one damage is a big deal. Well, if it's out of your control, you don't feel especially bad about. Here, get one damage here. Okay, good. As long yeah. as we got that one damage. <laughs> yeah. No swipe available for Zora or a Wrath or a Keeper. This is going to be pretty hard. Yeah, it's looking cream right now. Yeah. yeah Pile of Treasure is going to come down, and obviously, Cranich has an answer. Uh, in the form of that explosion and the knife juggler. Hey, you never know. A sheep might pop out. Uh, the explosion sheep would be really good on this board. Today has sure. really been a might good happen. day for Shredders. They've been kind of having their day with some of the stuff we've seen. Power yeah, so. overwhelming from the top. With that Nerubi and Eka, I would be perfect. shocked if he didn't use it. Yeah. And you can play the gang boss as well. All right, let's okay. see it. One time. Oh, Karnis was unhappy about that. Okay, so it's a stealth. That's, yeah, that's really good. That uh, That's not going to single-handedly turn the game, but A, it's soaked to hit from a knife, uh, and it's going to be able to trade out with the juggler. Which... Yeah. Okay. The abusive couldn't have traded the stealth minion, so that's actually pretty big. That said, this is still a really bad spot for Zoro. This is, <laughs> oh, no. What you are witnessing is Zoo actually doing what Zoo wants to do most of the time. Yeah, it's sure crowded the board. It has a bunch of minions of various HP. Like 14 power and <laughs> something like similar in toughness on the board right now. Right, so Voidcaller or Implosion. Obviously, Voidcaller at this point point because you have no other demons in hand is just basically kind of a tempo play but uh, implosion feels a lot better oh Karnish does not believe but he oh, got it right wow. oh, he got it exactly right sometimes you make your own destiny of us oh let's see yeah if he was to roll a four training in the abusive surgeon would have been a slightly better play yeah. but he gets uh he gets the three that he uh, was predicting with his flame imp trade so Kranich can stay alive i believe here uh notwithstanding a an owl draw uh, for Kranich next turn with that Druid in the claw. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But he really is just in a, a spot where it's Druid two, doesn't two have damage. anything like a Shadow Flame. Yeah, that's two damage. Oh, that is good enough. Hey, Savage, are, are you also a wizard? Are you just calling this stuff? Well, I mean, there's a lot of cards that do two damage. Oh, so. he doesn't see it. Wait. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has it, This is lethal. It's yeah. not, he it just tapped for BM, right? Yeah, he'll get there. I, that's, so, yeah. I was just a happy little BM right there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Exactly seven to face, and uh, Kranich is gonna tie it up. Yeah, Kranich, uh, Kranich played the zoo game very well. Uh, Zoro, you know, this this can happen to Druids. You know, we've seen over the course of this tournament where Druid just draws all spells. Sometimes it, what happens here happens where you just draw minions. You're not getting that mana ramp. You're not getting your swipes. And I mean, I'd like to point out that against the Hunter, he drew two swipes in like the first yeah, ten cards. Yeah, so. still didn't help. I mean, yeah, it, it evens out. It evens yeah, out. Yeah. But yeah, so Kranich ties up the series, and now we go to as Savish predicted. Yep, uh, we are going to see the Druid Mirror. Uh, that was a very one-sided game there. We saw the hero power coming out from Zoro and Kranich with pretty much perfect hand. And uh, that's uh, just the zoo things. There's so much stats with so little mana cost early on. Right. Just something that Druid can't keep up with. Yeah, and it seems like uh, we can guarantee that one Druid is going to win this next match, for sure. I think I think that's reasonable to say. <laughs> uh, notwithstanding any, you know, hijinks. Uh, yep. I'm not even sure. Yeah, because there's no, there's no unstable portals. There's no spell yeah. slingers or hellfires. It's just a very honest game between two Malfurions. Against right. you. And I don't think they can ever tie. There's not a situation where two druids can ever tie a game. Ooh, Kranich looking like he's in pain. He's uh, probably thinking about that, whether or not to keep the Ember of Tourism. Oh no. Choose to throw it away. Personally, I kind of like giving it, well, especially with first, the inner rate. Yeah, going first, you have a little bit less uh, That's true. knowledge it's, it's yeah. of what you're going to draw. So yeah. just keep it innervate is completely fine. And, oh, innervate and wild growth does be wow. a single innervate. Yeah, and that Ancient of War also a great card in this matchup. Yeah, back when uh, Drew was really, really popular, Black Knight was uh, very prevalent all over the place. And sometimes innovating out an ancient war is not <laughs> yeah. the best option you want to do. Yeah, Zoro, after that wild card, he would be uh, able to innovate coin out the Ancient of War right. on his turn tree. And if he makes it a 10 5, he can win in three turns. <laughs> all he has to do, yeah. all he has to do is uproot it. Yeah. Unlike that he would risk the big game hunters, though. <laughs> uh, sometimes you gotta play brave. You, know, you just gotta, you gotta play to win. Not play, play to, to be reasonable. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, one day, one day we're gonna see the uproot be a thing, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be wonderful. But for now, Kranich is uh, <laughs> gonna go ahead and just put out <laughs> the sludge belt. That's like, oh, that's a strong play. Then, then Zoro is like, I see your belts are and I raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice taunt. <laughs> a, a little bit more stats. Basically, basically, Kranich is on his front line. Uh. Like he has a really nice yard, and then like <laughs> no. Zoro just walks out, like, oh. <laughs> nice. Here's my ancient of war. Uh, that's oh, that just happened. Yeah. 
Uh, now, what are you afraid of if your cringe is Dr. Boom or... No, it's Ancient Horror. Cringe looks pained, sufficiently pained by this, so... <laughs> Uh, the only thing you don't want to see is Keeper to Grove, I guess. Right? <laughs> is like, Kranich. are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, so, for Kranich now, you kind of have to start figuring out how you deal with this mini boss in the fight. It's kind of like a little, PV, a little right. PvE encounter. Yeah, yeah sure. First, you gotta, you gotta get past the, the Ancient War before you ever start to fight Zoro. The rest of Zoro's hand, uh, not, you know, obviously just drew the Keeper of the Grove. Prior to that, was looking pretty, pretty not. Uh, Useful. Yeah, it's not spectacular. And Keeper of the Grove isn't that spectacular. No, anyways, it right? really isn't. I guess you can kill the ooze yeah, after well, the Belcher dies. Let's Something. just say is you could just silence the Belcher if you want to. Right. The, the same thing, thing right? Yeah. Silencing yeah. and pinging. It just feels cooler to do two damage. Yeah, it does. The Keeper, are, Keeper are not too bad. He has double roars in his hand right now. Getting a four toughness minion on the board. Not too bad. Right, Kranich so. here has a way to deal with that Ancient of War right now, but it's going to take his entire turn and the shade of Naxxramas. Yeah, uh, the only saving grace from really is that Zoro is sitting on all spells. That's true. So this is, uh, I don't know, I think, I think people get this idea with Druid that it's just one of those classes where it just always curves into these minions, but we've seen it a fair number of times in this tournament where Druid just doesn't do that. Yeah, sometimes. Druid has a bunch of spells or they don't get the spells they need, so uh, that's kind of what happens when you're playing a mid-range deck that's a really good percentage uh, split of spells and minions. Yeah, yeah sometimes you just miss those drops, uh, you know, uh, Turn six, perhaps, is like the most often mm. the turn that you miss. There's only Emperor Thorazan or maybe a Sylvanas that's on turn six. So sometimes you want to, you know, do something else, like shred a hero power or maybe even play a five drop. Five for no one. Yep. Gran is here evaluating whether or not, uh, whether he should swipe or fraud. Yeah. Goes for the swipe and keeps the shade. Wow, very greedy. Yeah. He's going to use the Wrath Nixer or possibly the Force of Nature to clear. But uh, Zoro drawing the Druid of the Claw is going to put more stuff and more pressure on the board. I'm a little bit surprised that he chose not to trade the 3-3 three, three, board at 5-3, but with the Brat in his hand. I, I suppose he was thinking maybe, okay, I might pick up a Shredder, then I can Brat that off. I actually really like that play from uh, from Kranich. Because again, you look at what's in your hand, you have two forces of nature, you have Dr. Boom, so okay, next turn, you may play force of nature, clear out, you trade the shade into the damage keeper of the Grove. Mm -hmm. And then turn seven, you're planning on playing Dr. Boom, and then it's just kind of a matter of Ooh. seeing what Zoro does. But Zoro, based on what his hand understands, it is time to go face. And, yeah. Uh, Kranich may get into a little bit of trouble for kind of picking this uh, greedier line. Yeah, Zoro uh, definitely going to punish Kranich's uh, greed play a little bit with Absolutely. the charge. And um, yeah, Kranich is forced to clear the board here as much as he can. Um, <laughs> he might be a, a healthy 20 on the screen, but he's actually only sitting at 6 health because uh, combo hmm. is available to Zoro. Possibly even next turn if he draws an enemy. Seems like he wants to rot instead of force wow. nature here. Yeah, and it's uh, it's important to note that uh, when you are playing against a druid and the druid of the claw comes down in cat form, that is like the international sign for you are dead in two turns unless you do something crazy. Uh, because Pretty when much. the druid starts pushing for damage, it's more than capable of putting out a lot of damage. Right. Yeah. And um, kind of just the option to actually take the keeper here, just take one damage. And he goes ahead and does that because he can't really utilize hero power next turn. He has to play Dr. Broom. Yeah. Oh! Ancient of Lore, yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> solid draw. That's a good draw. It's, I think at this point, uh, with the cards in hand, obviously Zoro has kind of his finisher cards. Right. So having the 5-5 five, five on the board might actually just be the more relevant thing. Well, yeah, Zoro got super fortunate. His hand was swipe, force of nature, double savage roar, and he just topped like every single minion that he needed to play on curve. Yeah, it's also worth noting that, you know, if, if he hadn't drawn Ancient of Lore, uh, he still had ways that he could have continued to press damage. That's true. And he only had to get down to 14 because he had the combo named already, yep. so... But this uh, is like the dream situation, right? Yeah. Now, um, if you're Zoro, the only concern you have right now is the combo from your opponent's side. So you need to do a little bit of math and see if you need to, like, you know, be a little, play a little bit more safe. Uh, you can deny Kranich one mana by killing the Aspirant if you think that's going to oh, yeah, that's also get better combo range. Uh, I kind of like the swipe because of the potential of uh, the, of the roars, like maybe double the roar can happen. And the swipe does clear both Boombots and the Aspirant. Yep. After that, he still could uh, keep of the Crow if he wants to. Might want to keep that for a, for a silencing at all, but I like, I feel like, yeah, <laughs> you just go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, at this point, Zora has pretty much written Kranich a series of letters entitled, I'm going to get you next turn. Uh, between <laughs> the cat, Druid of the Claw, and the Keeper of the Grove, two damage to the face. And he will. There's no way for Kranich right now to stop that Force of Nature Savage Roar from Zoro's side. 
Right, so obviously he's trying to clear damage here, trying to do as much as he can to stay alive. He even burns the Innervate to activate the hero power. Oh no, sorry, activate the Shredder, which puts something on the board. But yeah, we obviously know that uh, there's more than enough damage in Zoro's hand by a lot. Yeah. And he's even gonna go ahead and put up Savage Door just to assert dominance, let him know how much damage he actually had. And he's gonna go ahead and take the series and advance to join Tice in the top eight for uh, the Hearthstone World Championship. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Granite's, all, Granite's just down, but he's not out. He will have another chance to still get into that pressure top eight. Right, and I mean, he played that series. He came back, almost completed the reverse sweep. Uh, played it very well. And that was a very tight game, actually, as uh, the Druid Mirror goes. It just kind of ultimately came down to the fact that uh, what was in uh, Zoro's hand allowed him to push for that damage earlier than Kranich could. Kranich was still trying to like get on board. By the time Zoro had already decided, like, actually, it's time to do damage. So yeah, yeah. Turn, so, yeah turn three, Ancient of War is pretty tough to that beat. Is, that is very especially good. when you don't have a silence for yeah. it. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, Zoro did keep his cool. I mean, lo losing two matches going into the final game sometimes feels a little bit bad, right? You go like, oh, I've been losing so much, and I've been up to zero. How did I get myself into this position, right? But I realized that you know, those are just bad matchups, and he stuck with his game plan and it worked out for him. And congratulations. He's going to advance to BlizzCon. Yeah, and as we've said, like, Kranich still has another chance uh, tomorrow exactly. to secure his own spot in the top eight. And I want to go back just really quickly. I like that Kranich and the situation he was in in that Druid Mirror, he kind of understands, like, all right, I'm behind on the board. The Ancient of Wars come out. I could just trade into it with the Shade, and I could get rid of it. Uh, that's probably the safer play. But he went for kind of the big risk, big reward play by not uh, trading that in. And I think there's kind of a... An, hidden amount of strategy to the Druid Mirror match. A lot of people just kind of look like, oh, you had your curve, you know, you had your meta acceleration. But Kranich actually took a line of play that while he did end up getting a little bit of trouble for, uh, would have allowed him to use the Wrath if Druid of the Claw hadn't come down and really secure that board. And he would have had a, a much better position than he would have been in by trading in the Shade of Anxiamas. Yeah, it was a greedy play. It was a risky play, but he was behind at that yep. point. So we can't blame him for that. All right, and uh, we actually have uh, Rachel standing by to talk to Zora about his win. We are back here live with Zoro. Congratulations on that victory. You just took out our only competitor who competed last year in BlizzCon. So, how are you feeling right now? You just won the last year's last 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 uh, okay. uh, so, uh, as it was actually a really hard match. I got the advantage with two early wins, but then I lost two in a row, so I felt really nervous. Uh, but then I buckled down and I, I got that final win, and I just need to, uh, I just need to go fighting even more to win the next matches. Well, you have a, a secret weapon of your own, and that is Tiddler Celestial on your team. Did he give you any advice preparing for BlizzCon? Uh, yeah. uh, Tiddler actually helped him a lot. He talks with him a lot about uh, his decks, and also he just practices with him a lot. But the most important point is that um, he's very good at uh, a tweaking decks, so he helped him there. Well, fantastic. It sounds like you're all ready, and you will be moving on to the main stage of the Hearthstone World Championships at BlizzCon, so congratulations to you. We have two more matches coming up today. I'm going to give you back to our casters. Thank you, Rachel. As she points out, we have two more matches left, and now we have a quarter of our top eight decided. I've seen Zoro and Tyson. Uh, very, very well-deserved from all the players. I'm eager to see who else joins them a little later on. It's going to be exciting to see. Maybe Ostkaka can do it. He was the other Patreon player. It's quite an exciting storyline there. Everybody thought the Patreon is down and out. Nobody's going to play that stuff. Mm -hmm. But Ty has been very convincing with it. Ostkaka won his uh, first match with it. Will he Will he get through the second one? We'll see. Yeah, yes. I think uh, Hot Form will definitely try to have something to say <laughs> to Ostkaka about that. Both very solid players and very methodical. And obviously, Ostkaka, you know, kind of seen as one of the, the dark horses to win this whole thing. But Hot Form, very, very impressive in his own right. Uh, before we go to break, we want to take a chance to thank our sponsors who have uh, helped to make this possible. Obviously, go ahead and uh, check out the stuff they are putting out and uh, be a part of the conversation as well. Talk to myself, talk to Amaz, talk to the very handsome Savige. Uh, hit us up on Twitter, hit us or hit up Twitter at @playharstone using the hashtag HWC2015. But uh, before we get into our break, let's go ahead and uh, look at some highlights from the last few games brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR.